All right, welcome back to Adobe Camera Raw 13.2. So Adobe has given us a new version of Adobe Camera Raw. And normally I wouldn't go into it too much, but they do have some small updates. And for those of you who are wishing that Adobe Camera Raw go back to the old version, yeah, they haven't done that, but they have added a few new things to it, most of which are not gonna be that important to like 99% of the people in the world. The first thing that we have is something called super resolution. It's kind of a very kitschy name, not a big fan of it, but it is supposed to double the image resolution and give you better details for display prints and large images. Then we have Adobe Pro Raw files. If you have an iPhone and you shoot a raw format, this will allow you to edit that raw file. We have the ability to filter and sort using the film strip, and I'll show you that, but I don't really think anybody uses that in Adobe Camera Raw. And we have the ability to reorder and edit panels. All right, so we will switch on over. Let's zoom in. So we got our big full screen here and cool. All right, so we have this image and I've picked this image just because I know it's gonna work for this and be easy for us to see the differences. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna test out this new enhance to see is it better than the old way of enlarging an image in Photoshop and then we're gonna compare it to On One Photo's resize which is the original genuine fractals for upsizing or enlarging images. All right, so the first thing that we have here is we have our raw file. And to change this or get into it, notice that we have three little dots right up here. We can click on that and we can drop down to this new enhance. You can also come over to the three little dots over here and drop down to enhance, which is command shift D or most likely on a PC control shift D, though I'm not positive. So we'll go ahead and click that and that's gonna bring up our new panel. And I have super resolution turned on, but by default it won't be turned on. So when you go to this, you can just turn it on so it improves the details and reduces artifacts in most raw files. Now, what is it doing here? So it says right up here, it says, Enhance uses machine learning to improve image quality. The result will be saved in a new DNG file. So for those of you who are not familiar with DNG, that is Adobe's digital negative. That is their raw file format that they've been wishing all the camera companies would convert to for years and years and years and years. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on super resolution. What this is gonna do, it's gonna double my resolution size. So right now we are at 5,760 pixels in length, its longest dimension. So it's gonna double that. So I'm gonna click on it and it's telling you right here that it's gonna take a few seconds so on my computer. It's gonna take five seconds to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and click Enhance. So right down here, we can see that the file is rendering itself. And when it's done, it's gonna pop up a secondary file. So this is the new file. Remember, it's saying it's saving the new one as a DNG. So we have a .dng here and a CR2 file here. So this is the large file and this is the small file. So I'm gonna shift click and select both of these. And we will hit reset so that the files are back where they were. And what, all we wanna do is make sure that the shadows get opened up a little in these images. So both images are toned exactly the same. Now, one of the things that I can show you that's new in here is this new sort. So if you come down here, and this is the files that it's talking about. So you could open up multiple files. I'm not sure why you would do that because most people would just use Bridge, Lightroom or Photo Mechanic as a browser rather than Adobe Camera Raw. But for some reason, if you just dumped a whole bunch of photos in and you needed to browse through them or sort them, you could do that here. And if you wanted to sort, you're gonna now come down here to this little thing and you can see, we can sort by capture date, name, star, color label. If this is something you're interested in, this is where it is, this is how you do it. Now, the next thing that we have are the panels. And if you look over here, these are our different panels. So we have the edit panel, we have curves panel, all this stuff. Now we can come into these panels and change or configure the way it looks. All right, so the other new option that we have here is we can now turn these on and off. What I'm gonna do is come out here to basic. I'm gonna right click. So if you're on a Mac and you don't have right click, that's control click. 
we're just going to click out here and it says edit panels to show. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And now we get this panel right here and notice we have all of our default panels. Now let's say I don't use calibration and I want to turn that off, which I don't use it a lot. Now I can turn that off. When I hit OK, notice calibration doesn't exist anymore. So we could come back up here to basic, edit to show panels. You can see that's turned off. I can also reconfigure how these work. So let's say that I wish the geometry was above optics. You can see right here, it says use the up and down arrow keys to move these. So I'll use the arrow and bam, just like that. Geometry is above it. Geometry is below it. So I can control the order in which the panels show up. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my back on and hit okay. So that's another option that it's a small little addition, but you know, it might be helpful for some people who don't like having all these or wish the order could be changed. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open these two files into Adobe Photoshop. So we're gonna come down here and because both are selected, they're both going to open. If you only select one, only one is gonna open. All right, so right here we can see this is the enhanced DNG. And if we look down here, we are at 11,520 pixels. And if we go to our raw file, we're only at 5,060 pixels. So what we're gonna do is upsize this the old way and then compare the two. So I'm gonna to go to image and we're gonna drop down to image size and we're gonna change this to 11, 5, 20. Now both of these are gonna be the same size. Now the mode or sampling method that you wanna use is preserve details too. By default, it's on automatic, but I've already done this once. So we're gonna go ahead and change this to preserve details too. And we're gonna go ahead and hit that. And now both of these images are gonna be the exact same size. So what we're gonna do is take this and move it on to enhance details. So to do that, we'll grab our move tool, just drag it up in here, over, hold shift, let go, and bam, just like that, we now have two files. And so this is going to be preserved to, we'll just do two instead of 2.0. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch on over to On One Photo and I've got the image loaded up so it will save time. So this is On One Photo and originally Photoshop didn't have any sort of upsizing or way to enlarge images. And there was a program called Genuine Fractals and then On One got it and now it's called Resize and you can see right down here. We're gonna go into the document size. I'm just gonna go ahead and change the resolution here to 600. And what this will allow me to do is to double the size of that. So we're just gonna go ahead and resize that and hit done. This will run through its process and render that image and then we'll go ahead and put that into Adobe Photoshop. All right, so what we're gonna do now is take a look at the three different images. I've also added the original image here. Now the reason I've added the original image because I think it's gonna be important as to what I say about the rest of these images. I actually made this part of the video over again, and there's a reason that I made this over again. And really it has to stem from, because the on one version is so different from these other two. And I think actually now I'm gonna drag this above here because it's gonna make more sense. After I thought about it from a little bit, I didn't totally change my opinions, but I'm like rethinking this. And I also changed the way that I did the on one version of it. When I resize using on one, I actually changed the settings to details and genuine fractals. And I'll flash that up here on the screen here and so you can see what those settings look like. And then I upsized it using that method. And that's what we're looking at right now. We have this version through on one software. And what on one software is doing is actually reducing a lot of the noise. So you'll notice in this version, there's almost no noise in this section of the image. However, you'll also notice there's not as much detail in the horse. Now, this is kind of good and bad. I think in general that you should never sharpen an image from the onset. You should always sharpen the very last thing that you do. You don't wanna sharpen your image and then tone it it's just not gonna work good because really you need to sharpen after you've sized your image. That's important to notice. And if you look at the other versions here in a second, and I'll go ahead and turn this off. One thing you're gonna notice is they're much sharper. 
So when we go here, there's a whole lot more detail and sharpness. And this is good and bad. I'm not saying that these versions are worse than on one because I really don't think that. I actually think they're probably better, but there's some good and bad things with each one. So if we go back to the on one, notice we don't have as much detail, a lot more solid color blacking, but we've also reduced a lot of the noise at the same time. And if we come here, notice that now we've increased a lot more detail. And there's a couple things that are happening here. One of them does look like sharpening and sharpening is basically contrast control. I'm also not a huge fan of increasing contrast in raw files. However, I think the on one image has too little contrast and it's gone too far compared to what we're seeing here, which is the preserved details two version. Now, when we go to the new one, which is this super res, which is going to be on the bottom, you're going to see more increase of contrast, but more detail And the, the detail is not really easy to see, but it is there. So now we've turned it off and we've turned it on. We've turned it off and we've turned it on. And one of the things I'm noticing is it's really an increase in contrast and sharpness. It's just clean those details up just a little bit. So when we look at them, it also seems to have reduced the noise a little bit compared to the preserved details version. So I think we're getting a little bit of noise reduction in this newer version. So I would say that this super resolution does seem to work extremely well. When I was doing that, I'm like, well, I wonder what the original photo looked like as far as noise. So that's when I brought this image up here. And so we're going to go ahead and zoom into this. And this is our original unsized image. And when I zoom in about that much, we still have some of the noise, which is normal. When you upsize an image, it's usually not making the image like any better. It's keeping the resolution that you have. That's what you want. This does seem to be very comparable to the super resolution and the preserved details as far as how much noise is in the image. But when you look at the on one version of this, it does have a tremendous amount of noise reduction going into it. Um, I'm not so sure I'm a huge fan of it. I truthfully wish we had like a happy medium in between the two. And truthfully, the super resolution seemed to do that where it's increasing that sharpness and it does in areas out here where we don't really want to see the noise, it's reducing it. So overall, I would say super resolution does seem to work better than the old preserved details, which is good on one is doing some good things in like unimportant areas, but it was just removing too much detail. Um, so not a huge fan of, of the on one, which is strange because it's something that I use for years and years and years. So those are my thoughts. Super resolution isn't something that I use on a daily basis, but it is something I do occasionally have to use for clients. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>